Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk about works. Um, um, today, uh, I will talk about the, uh, uh, one of the synthetic biology area by uh, incorporating uh, a natural component into DNA to expand the genetic alphabet. And also we talk about the uh, application, so how, uh, what uh, we should do using this uh, technology. So um, there are a lot of uh, uh, creatures uh, living on uh, Earth. Uh, actually, this is a Jorge Romes work. This is the next speaker. And this is uh, my pictures. <laughs> so, <laughs> so although these are very similar, uh, but uh, uh, all creatures are very different from each other. About the same intellectual level. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, these have uh, all DNAs uh, with the uh, same chemical components of uh, um, four base nucleotide. A, G, C, T, um, uh, as a genetic alphabet. Uh, this is very amazing because uh, only four uh, letters are ruling uh, our lives. And uh, uh, my question is, uh, uh, if we have more than four letters, so could we, uh, uh, could we improve our uh, functionality much more? So this is the simple question uh, is also our objectives. So to do this, uh, we have to develop uh, a third base pair. We call it a natural base pair. Um, uh, to, uh, to this end, uh, this natural base pair can function as a third base pair in replication, transcription, and or translation. And if we, uh, we can make such a system, uh, we can introduce new component, uh, new component into nucleic acid and proteins, uh, resulting in increasing the fun their functionalities. So for example, uh, this is a usual uh, genetic code with uh, four letters. But if you add two unnatural letters in this table, so you can <coughs> increase uh, the genetic code of code by 216. Uh, so you can add uh, so maybe 100 amino acids into proteins. So as for nucleic acid, nucleic acid has also a versatile functionality. Uh, it's very amazing because uh, they have only four very similar chemical compounds or bases. But uh, uh, the uh, functionality it might be less than uh, proteins because of protein has a 20 uh, standard amino acids. So this is a, a nucleic acid with a, a very four similar uh, components. But if you add a more different uh, component into these uh, tools, um, maybe you can make a more uh, much functional uh, nucleic acid. So this is our purpose. So, uh, but uh, until recently, uh, such an uh, experiment is uh, just uh, science fiction. This is my favorite picture of US uh, uh, TV uh, uh, <laughs> X-Files. So, uh, but this, this is very interesting because uh, uh, the researcher tried to examine the alien's DNA. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know actually this isn't uh, this alien's, but uh, she said there is a gap <laughs> on the sequence band. So that is shows uh, uh, extra uh, bases in, in the DNA. Um, and this is just science fiction, but uh, uh, our sequence method including uh, involving a natural base pair is uh, imagined from this uh, uh, science fiction. Later I will show you. So and at present there are uh, Three uh, unnatural base pairs of three groups are, are functions in a, a, a PCR amplification or a transcription. And uh, uh, one is uh, uh, Freud Lubesberg of script. He is here and he's talking about uh, this. 
So, and our group and uh, Stephen Benner, uh, uh, there are three uh, groups. So that uh, I just, uh, uh, this time, uh, I, um, uh, I would like to focus our unnatural base pairs. So, uh, more than 18 years, uh, we are struggling to create unnatural base pairs by improving uh, step by step. And uh, I will uh, talk uh, about the uh, latest our unnatural base pair, uh, DSPX, that exhibit high uh, fidelity and uh, efficiency <coughs> in PCR amplification. So this is a uh, DSPX uh, uh, chemical structures. And they have no hydrogen, hydrogen bonding interactions between pairing bases. And uh, these shapes are different from those of natural bases. But uh, we designed these natural base pairs by strictly, uh, uh, strictly uh, uh, re uh, refined the uh, shape complementarity between pairing bases, faces. So uh, the uh, shape of DS, uh, so the, the DS base has a thiophen at this position. So uh, the shape is uh, uh, very large uh, from those of A or G. And in contrast, PX has a five-membered ring uh, uh, of the uh, uh, basque part, uh, two, uh, two nitro pylor. So and T and C has a six-membered ring. So that's why uh, the PX is smaller than T or C. And uh, uh, in this case, so if DS uh, paired with T uh, or uh, DS pairs C, uh, they are crushed each other sterically. So, and uh, A and uh, PX, in this case, just shape is, uh, shape is uh, uh, slightly fitted each other. So that's why we add the uh, nitro group at this position. Uh, the oxygen, so electrostatically uh, repelled this nitrogen of A, so that it can not pair each other. Uh, instead of A, DS has no nitrogen at this position. So that's why uh, the shape of DS completely fit with the shape of PX. So uh, that's why this DSPX pair can function as third base pair. Uh, first, we try to, uh, the, uh, to know the ability of the DSPX pair. We performed 100 cycles of PCL using this uh, uh, natural base pairs. Uh, we first make uh, uh, D, like DNA containing DS uh, by chemical synthesis and perform 100 cycles of PCR. But uh, uh, PCR is mostly uh, after 20 cycles of PCR, uh, the amplification is uh, uh, um, uh, finished. So that uh, uh, to uh, maintain the exponential uh, amplification, we first uh, carried out 10 cycles PCR, then diluted. Then uh, uh, again, we performed 10 cycles and dilution. We repeated 10 times uh, these cycles to perform 100 cycles of PCR. So then uh, we uh, obtained a huge amount of DNA. Uh, it's uh, so 10 to the 27th fold increased. It's OK. <laughs> Which polymerase was Which polymerase used? Ah, okay. Uh, in this case, we use a deep bent DNA polymerase, which has a three prime exon nucleus activity. Yeah. So it depends on the polymerases. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> so uh, next, uh, so how much natural base pairs uh, in, included in, in the final amplified product? Uh, then we performed the DNA sequencing. Uh, this is a Sanger sequencing, but we add the natural base substrate in the sequencing, but we didn't add the uh, di dioxiditerminator corresponding to the unnatural bases. So that's why uh, the unnatural base position uh, we can see as a gap like this. So after uh, 100 cycles of PCR, uh, the sequencing pattern is mostly the same. So uh, after 100 cycles of PCR, so the uh, unnatural bases are still survived. 
And actually, this is a, a, a X file, the sequencing, like this. Um, uh, more uh, detailed experiment, maybe uh, Hua Romesberg will talk about uh, uh, quantification of uh, uh, so the, to determine the selectivity and the fide, uh, efficiency. Mm -hmm. So that I will just omit uh, uh, more uh, uh, exp detailed experiment, but we just uh, tell about the result. Uh, fi uh, finally, we found the uh, selectivity of the of the uh, unnatural base pairing is more than 99.90%. Uh, this is using uh, deep vein DNA polymerases. So, and another important thing is uh, uh, misincorporation of unnatural base substrate opposite uh, uh, natural bases in template. In this case, uh, the uh, misincorporation rate is less than 0.005% per uh, replication per base, uh, basis. So this is a, a, a natural base misincorporation rate. So that's why uh, this natural base misincorporation is uh, mostly the uh, same as a uh, natural base uh, base uh, fidelity. So and uh, uh, PX has a very unique because we can attach to any functional group to these positions like uh, uh, diodes, uh, azide, and ethenyl. Uh, azide and ethenyl can be used for quick reactions to modify other uh, to attach other functional groups, and also uh, biotin can be uh, attached to this position. So then, and uh, when we use these DS and modified PX, uh, modified PX bases, uh, the PCR amplification is very high. So um, we now harbor such a third base pair, so that uh, we are trying to uh, several applications. Then and today, I just will talk about the uh, DNA aptama uh, uh, applications here. So uh, I just a bit talk about uh, uh, DNA aptamers. And nucleic acid aptamers are uh, uh, single oligonucleotide uh, uh, fragments that specifically bind to target molecules. That's why uh, nucleic acid uh, are expected to uh, uh, alternative of uh, uh, antibodies. So the unique point is uh, uh, aptamers can be generated by uh, in vitro selection system, uh, repetitive selection and PCR amplification uh, uh, cycles uh, uh, by using uh, uh, nucleic acid uh, libraries with random sequences. And the strong point is uh, uh, relative to antibodies, uh, the, the aptamer is high specificity and low immunogenicity and easy quality control and modification for mass uh, production because uh, at first we uh, determine the sequence by the selects. But after that, we can chemically synthesize the, of the aptamers. So that's why it's very easy to apply to uh, diagnostic and therapeutic applications. But the weak point is uh, uh, the affinity is relatively low uh, as compared to uh, antibodies. This is because uh, only four bases uh, compared to 20 amino acids. That is a problem. So another one is low stability against nucleases. I uh, explained first these uh, problems. So uh, this is another uh, science fiction movie. I like, very, uh, I like uh, science fiction movies. And this is also very interesting because uh, someday uh, a simple bacteria came, for, uh, came from uh, universe to Earth. And they, uh, uh, only few days, they evolved to higher uh, creatures. And the scientists uh, determined the, uh, uh, their genetic materials, and they have uh, 10 bases, uh, 10 different bases. <laughs> so uh, this is just uh, uh, science fiction. But uh, uh, I imagine this is very interesting because uh, so uh, increased complexity by increasing uh, letters. So if so, uh, rapid evolution is possible and also uh, increase, increased functionality. So that's why we try to uh, evolutionary engineering, engineering method of selection by increasing the uh, DNA letters 
uh, in the uh, uh, libraries. So we uh, performed uh, selection procedures using the increase later libraries. Um, we first, we, we just add the uh, DS spaces into the library as a fifth space. Uh, there are two reasons. One is uh, a DS base is very hydrophobic. Uh, nucleic acid is generally be, uh, uh, very hydrophilic, so that uh, it's just a bit difficult to bind to hydrophobic part of the proteins. So that's why we add the hydrophobic DS bases into the uh, library like this. So another one is uh, we didn't add the PX base in the library as a sixth base. Uh, because DNA is always uh, uh, complementary paired each other. So in this case, DNA has just uh, uh, like a simple uh, to form a single duplex. Uh, this is not good for our aptamers to increase uh, structural diversity. And if you add the only DS base, DS base cannot pair as other uh, bases. So that's why maybe uh, the uh, structure might be increased. So these are two reasons. Then we make uh, uh, this DNA library with uh, five, base, five different bases and perform the selection. And uh, uh, after that, we perform the PCR amplification. In, the, in this case, we add the DS and PX substrate. And we uh, make a double-stranded DNA. Then we separated on the DS containing uh, bases as next round library. So, uh, um, first, our demonstration, we choose, uh, we choose uh, 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 BGF-165. Uh, so this is very important for optimal researchers because uh, only one modified RNA optimal uh, named Macogen was approved uh, as a, a treatment for age-related macular degeneration. Only one optimal is uh, uh, approved. So that is a problem. So that uh, we, uh, we, our first target is this. And this, this is actually, so this is a, 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 a mark gen. So uh, the KD value is relatively high, uh, five to 100 picomoles. And this is RNA. And uh, another DNA optimer was uh, generated by Larry Gold group. And in this case, it's 300 picomole. And it has a two structure, so that another one is much more lower uh, affinities. So then we performed uh, uh, in vitro selection targeting BGF 165. We performed six round, uh, seven round of uh, selection like this. We also add the uh, competitor uh, of the uh, Larry Gold's optimus like this. And the important thing is we uh, performed more than uh, 150 cycles of PCR in total. So uh, if the uh, natural bases are removed uh, during the uh, uh, PCR amplification, uh, the uh, selection was maybe uh, fa failed. But uh, we, uh, 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 most unnatural bases survived uh, during the uh, selection procedures. Then we got uh, uh, DNA aptamers. It has uh, 47 uh, DNA, and only two unnatural bases uh, uh, existed he here and here. So uh, the KD value is uh, uh, less than one picomole. In the same uh, conditions, uh, the Larry Gold's DNA optima is uh, 100 picomole. So that's why only two unnatural bases uh, increased by uh, one more than 100 times higher affinity uh, relative to the uh, conventional DNA optimals. Then we uh, re replaced the DS base with A because uh, uh, DS base is uh, uh, sometimes often um, replaced with A uh, during PCR amplification. <coughs> so that's why we uh, also make uh, A uh, mutant. In this case, the KD value is uh, 300 picomole. So that's why only two unnatural bases uh, uh, effectively uh, increase uh, uh, binding affinities. 
So, and uh, uh, this aptamer also selectively bind to uh, BGF 165. Uh, it cannot bind to BGF 121 and other proteins. So that's why uh, this uh, aptamer is, uh, the uh, selectivity is also very high. So now we have uh, several aptamers by using this method uh, as well. Uh, um, uh, anti BGF aptamer here and uh, anti interferon gamma aptamer and also anti VWF aptamers. All the uh, 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 38 or 75 picomole, uh, which is much higher than the conventional DNA aptamers. And recently, uh, Dr. Howard Young of the National Cancer Institute is interested in this uh, interferon gamma aptamers. Uh, they have an assay system of the, uh, culture, uh, using uh, culture cells. Uh, interferon gamma interact with the uh, interferon gamma receptor, uh, stimulates uh, STAT1 uh, phosphorylation. And uh, uh, they have an uh, assay system using a flow cytometry uh, like this. So uh, if we add the, our uh, aptamer into the system, uh, the, uh, it, it, if the, uh, this aptamer uh, can uh, inhibit the interaction we uh, so that we test it. Uh, uh, 100 nanogram uh, per milliliter of aptamers are completely, so you can see they completely inhibit the uh, uh, interferon gamma and the receptor interaction like like this. And uh, we all, as a control, we also uh, tested using a, a conventional DNA aptamer as already uh, uh, reported. And in this case, uh, uh, more than 100 nanogram of picomole, uh, it cannot be, uh, cannot uh, inhibit the, the interferon gamma activity at all. So, but uh, uh, another problem is uh, uh, even if we use uh, uh, this uh, natural basis, the DNA aptamer uh, cannot stable uh, against nucleases. This is a general electrophoresis of our aptamers uh, in the serum. After uh, one day, uh, the most DNA aptamers are degraded in the serum. So, but uh, we have another technology is using, uh, we call it uh, mini hairpin DNA. This is uh, uh, just natural DNA uh, uh, hairpin structures. If you add the three prime uh, uh, region of this mini hairpin, uh, like this, and also, uh, actually we found uh, these two DS spaces are very important in this case. This is not so important. So that's why we replaced this region uh, with uh, mini hairpin DNA. So if uh, we modify uh, like this uh, story, uh, the aptamer's uh, stability is uh, significantly increased. Uh, more than 80% uh, survived after three days in the serum at 37 degrees. And uh, also uh, uh, this aptamer uh, can uh, show the uh, activi uh, in, vivo, uh, in vitro activities. So uh, I'll just be talk about the uh, mini hairpin DNA structures because uh, uh, okay uh, we still don't know the uh, simple DNA sequences. So I also try to make uh, a natural uh, base incorporated DNA, artificial DNA, but uh, uh, during uh, our experiment we still don't know the simple natural DNA. So just uh, I just be to introduce about this for <laughs> for new synthetic biology. <laughs> so um, uh, actually 25 years ago I accidentally find this uh, found this uh, unique DNA sequences. So this is a general electrophoresis of uh, this 21 uh, chemical synthesized <coughs> fragment. This is a complementary sequence. And uh, a complementary sequence shows a uh, usual uh, gel mobility on, uh, uh, on uh, denaturing gels. But uh, uh, this uh, 21 mark shows always uh, faster mobility uh, by one or two bases. 
Um, this is 25 years ago, so that uh, uh, at, at that time, uh, uh, even in chemical synthesis of DNA is also uh, uh, proceeding, so that uh, these are old methods. But uh, if when we use uh, uh, several methods, uh, the purified DNA is, uh, shows this position on the gel. At first, we don't know, uh, we didn't know what happened this DNA fragment, so that's why we made a more small, uh, much uh, shorter DNA fragment from the three prime terminus of this 21 mar. So in this case, uh, one, two, three, four, five mar uh, like this, and uh, six mar like this, and seven, eight, nine. So uh, if you uh, add, uh, make this fragment, so this fragment shows a higher mobility. After that, uh, uh, like increase like this. So that's why the 21 mar uh, uh, shows a lower mobility like this. And we also performed this experiment from the five prime region. Then we determined the GCG AAA GC sequence shows this abnormal mobility. Um, this is a, a thermal stability. Uh, this fragment shows a, a, a TM value is more than 82 degrees. Mm -hmm. And if you add the uh, seven molar urea, uh, even in the seven molar urea, uh, the TM value is 570 degrees. So that's why even in the uh, uh, denatured gel, uh, this fragment is still uh, some, uh, forms some structures. That's why uh, the mobility is high. Uh, after that, we uh, determined the structure by NMR and also GCG NNAGC or GCG NAGC it shows a, a very stable uh, structure. Then we call it a mini hairpin structure like this. So this is a, 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 a NMR structures, a, 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 a touch -like structures by the time to buy NMR, and two GC pairs and one shared type uh, uh, GA pair, and this is one uh, A is stacked with uh, uh, neighboring bases. So uh, the important thing is uh, uh, this thermal stable uh, mini hairpin DNA also resist uh, resist against nucleases. Uh, these are very stable uh, against uh, nucleus P1 or nucleus S1. So that's why if we add the three prime terminus of the optimal, uh, this structure blocked uh, against the three prime exonucleus activity. And also if you add the internal structure uh, of the uh, optimal, the optimal uh, imparts uh, uh, higher, uh, uh, st uh, increased uh, structural stability. So then uh, total structure is very stable against, even against uh, uh, nucleases. So uh, uh, last part, I will just be talk about uh, uh, cell selects using our uh, natural base pair <coughs> selection systems. Uh, Aptamas target are not only proteins, but also cells. So we performed uh, uh, in vitro selection against uh, breast cancer cells. Uh, in this case, we just use uh, cells as a target for the selection. Um, after seventh round selection, uh, we uh, uh, we uh, is show the uh, uh, we can see the gradually uh, uh, concentrate the uh, library like this. Then we determine the uh, uh, we uh, obtain the uh, DNA aptamers that specifically <coughs> bind to uh, MS MCF7 uh, like this. If we change the uh, DS base to A, so this optimal activity is uh, completely lost. So this is a uh, general uh, imaging using these optimals. We also have another optimals uh, with the same selection. And uh, 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 so the cells can specifically die with these optimals. And by a, a cofocal imaging, we also uh, 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 we also know that uh, this optimal uh, uh, was uh, uh, going to cells, maybe a, 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 a lysosome part. 
So we also see that uh, from the uh, pictures. So that's why uh, this aptama can be used for diagnostics uh, like uh, PET or something, or uh, it can be also used to, uh, as a DDS. So uh, finally, I just uh, talk about myself. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, I, actually, I cannot believe uh, I'm in now Singapore. <laughs> I, 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 I was uh, 18 hours uh, working in Japan uh, at Riken Institute, but uh, we, uh, uh, our group uh, now uh, moved to uh, Singapore uh, Institute of Bioengineering Nanotechnology. And uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, also like this, and uh, in this institute, uh, we're focusing on the diagnostics of using this uh, aptamas, and also to expand, uh, to, uh, uh, to increase the studies of uh, uh, this genetic alphabet expansion systems. And we have also uh, venture companies, Tango Six Biotechnologies, it's still in, in Japan, and they are focusing on therapeutic applications of this aptamers. So now we are uh, to expand the genetic alphabet, we are expand our research globally. So that uh, <laughs> if you are, uh, you are interested in uh, our research, please collaborate with each of uh, our so, and uh, uh, this study is all, uh, also uh, uh, Matsunaga and uh, Michiko are working with here. So, and I also thank uh, Howard Young. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. It was a wonderful um, initial flavor of everything that Xenobiology <laughs> and can do for us. And we'll have various presentations out of the meeting on that topic. Urgent questions. Natural DNAs are well known for the so-called second uh, Chargaffs or parity Chargaff rule. Mm -hmm. So what happens with this constraint in your synthetic artificial sequences? Does it break or, or complain? Um, actually, we don't know, but uh, um, our natural base pair has no hydrogen bonding interactions. So that's why we cannot add a lot of uh, uh, this third pair into DNA. So maybe in this case, um, it cannot be work. Is, is, it, is it OK? Is it not? I understand what you say, but it's yeah. not okay for me. Oh, okay. This <laughs> <laughs> applies for any uh, number of base pairs. So A equal T in duplex is B equal C. And on the DNA no, no, no. parity rule actually counts the oligomers over the same strand. No, it knows nothing about the opposite one. Trust me, I really well know what I'm speaking about. In the, in the same strand? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> Complementary palindromes counted over the same strand uh, actually <clears throat> exhibit pretty close frequencies. Okay. Maybe uh, for Romesberg made a bacteria using a sad base pair, so they will sh show the sharing of rules. So it's correct to not. <laughs> to, to me, the, the constraint you uh, are to introduce not uh, a single couple, but two couples of mm -hmm. artificial bases, you see. <laughs> it's a trick. Okay. Okay, thank you so much again to the speaker. Okay. Thank you.